Hello students from all over the world. Welcome to the first massive open online course on extracellular vesicles. This is a collaboration between University of Gothenburg in Sweden, Postec in Pohang, South Korea, University of California, Irvine, as well as the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles. My name is Jan Lötvall. I am the immediate past president of the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles and I'm a professor at Crafting Research Center in University of Gothenburg, Sweden. We have a history of working with extracellular vesicles uh, for more than 10 years beyond our other research area which is asthma and allergy. So the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles uh, is a very young non-profit international academic uh, association that basically was created uh, or, or was born in 2011 during an exoso meeting held in Paris in January. It was a cold January but we had a very friendly atmosphere and we're discussing how to help this field to grow and to get organized and basically we decided then and there to start the society and that was established during 2011 and the first society meeting was held in Gothenburg in Sweden in 2012. In the 2012 meeting we had approximately um, 480 participants and now in 2016 we had almost 900 participants. In uh, next, next year's meeting will actually be held in Toronto in Canada between 18 and 21st of May and if you're at all involved in extracellular vesicle research I really hope that you will join us there. So the aim of this presentation is to give a little bit of an introduction to the field um, about extracellular vesicles and when I say extracellular vesicles other terms are exosomes or microvesicles and these these are, are very difficult to distinguish from each other but basically they are, are both lipid bilayer membrane extracellular structures and they are usually spherical in shape so they're extracellular structures that are present in uh, many parts of the body. They car carry different surface molecules and they can carry different uh, functional proteins, both on the surface and as cargo, but also nucleotides such as RNA. So the membrane proteins are, are, can be transmembrane proteins and, and uh, are used to identify extracellular vesicles in, in a secretome. So if you think about these extracellular vesicles being released by all kinds of cells in the human body, we could consider them and call them a vesicular secretome, and that is present in the different tissues. So the aim of this course, and what I will touch on a little bit during my introduction, is where are they, what can they do, what does it mean, and hopefully after following the whole course, you will realize they are hugely important for the future field of research in biology and for, for education in biology, to understand biology. So where are they? The answer is that they are, when you think about the human body, absolutely everywhere. So if you think about the different body fluids, um, they have been described over the last, I would say, uh, almost four decades. They were described um, in, the, in prostate uh, secretion uh, in in the early in the late 1970s already, but here is an example of a publication in 1983. Uh, they're also present in urine that was described more than 10 years ago now. Breast milk uh, less than 10 years ago, and there's also RNA in the breast milk, showed by Cecilia Lesser uh, uh, in 2011, and clearly present in blood and plasma. And that's been known for. Uh, more than uh, 60 years now, I would say. Actually, 70 years. So when you look at electron microscopy, and this is an example uh, of prostate secretion published by Johanna Hoeg um, in Journal of Extracellular Vesicles in 2015. And you can see here a number of different examples of extracellular vesicles, which all are spherical, but actually sometimes you can film 
find them uh, to be multivesiculated. So there's a, sometimes a vesicle inside of another vesicles. And here in the lower middle, you have a very happy extracellular vesicle it's present then in, in, in the prostate secretion. And we should remember that uh, uh, extracellular vesicles are present in all body fluids. Also, for example, in fetal bovine serum, often used in in vitro culture experiments to help our cells to grow and to f flourish in, in in vitro. But there are plenty of, of uh, extracellular vesicles, there are exosomes in the fetal bovine serum that can be very uh, influential on the cellular phenotype and the function of the cell that you're actually studying. So that is something to really be aware of and consider. So if you look historically, extracellular vesicles were present in, in uh, described to be present in plasma already in the 1940s as procoagulants. Uh, in 67 they were described in uh, as platelet dusts dust, uh, but also at matrix vesicles during bone calcification. In the 70s they were described more in the prostate fluid and they are very prominent or in the prostate excretions and for example in ejaculates. Um, so they're very easy to find in that body fluid. Um, in 1983 Maybe that's the birth date of, of the modern uh, phase of, of extracellular vesicle research, specifically exosome research, uh, when two publications showed the release of the transferrin receptors uh, as part of, of maturation of, of uh, red blood cells. Uh, and these vesicles were, were referred to as, as exosomes. So if you look at the nomenclature of extracellular vesicles, it, it's really uh, confusing, I would say. There are many different names out there, and what is on the screen right now is only uh, a few examples that, that can be found in, in the publication. But there are three terms that are, are uh, quite important to consider as functional uh, extracellular vesicles. And these are exosomes that are uh, release through intracellular pathways and then we have ectosomes and microvesicles which probably are the same types of vesicles they're actually budding from the surface of the uh, of the cell so it's actually the cell membrane that folds out and and creates an extracellular vesicle so if you look at the uh, at the way uh, exosomes are produced there's first a, a inward budding of the uh, cell membrane and that's an early endosome. And when you look uh, closely at this endosome, it can bud again and create what we call a multivesicular body. And, and those are, are, are spherical uh, organelles with a number of different vesicles inside of them. So if you think about the topology, the outside of the uh, cell membrane is on the inside of the uh, endosome, but of the vesicles inside of the multivesicular body, they are all also pointing outwards. So uh, when these multivesicular endosomes then fuse with the cell membranes, the extracellular vesicles leave, or these vesicles leave the, uh, the multivesicular body, and they're then called exosomes. So those vesicles that are produced this way, uh, this way uh, have that nomenclature uh, traditionally. So that's how exosomes are considered to be produced. This is a simplified example and there are probably other pathways that are important as well. Now if you think about the uh, ectosomes or uh, microvesicles, they're actually budding from the surface of the cell membrane. So that's a direct uh, excretion of cell membranes to the, uh, to the uh, outside of the cell. And that's probably a very important part of, of uh, extracellular vesicle production as well. Now if you look at the um, number of publications in this area, and this is from a publication that we have in, had in Journal of Extracellular Vesicles in December 2014, you can see a very um, 
rapid growth of the number of publications from the early 2000s, maybe from 2003 or 2004. And there's been a steady and very strong growth in the field since then. So there are many people are getting into the research and, and biology of extracellular vesicles currently, which is of course why we find it very timely to run this uh, massive open online course. There is also a lot of efforts going into understanding the uh, nomenclature and this is a publication that just recently came out in Journal of Biomedical Semantics published in April 2016 and, and, and this, this paper is discussing extracellular RNA but also vesicles and vesicle nomenclature and there are a number of different ac examples here that can be considered um, for for these uh, vesicles that that anybody is studying in research. So if you look uh, into this center part of the nomenclature, you can see the uh, nomenclature apoptotic blebs and apoptotic uh, vesicle or apoptotic body. You can see the nomenclature of extracellular exosome or exosomes, they're often used as plural exosomes because we usually study the cloud of exosomes, not the single exosome, or microvesicles that are considered to be budding from directly from the plasma membrane. But there is other nomenclature out there as well. They could be called ectosomes. So uh, where are these vesicles? Obviously they are everywhere. What they can do, they can do very many things and that will be further discussed in this uh, massive open online course. Uh, it will also be discussed what it means, how they can be used in different ways and it will explain how we need to understand these very carefully to understand biology. So this is a five-week uh, course. In principle, there is a welcome and introduction presentation uh, block, which is um, mine, is the first talk. Uh, then another four, nomenclature, biogenesis, and cargo, six different presentations, collection and processing, five, isolation of extracellular vesicles, six, and characterization and quantification, five. And and. When you have, to, when you're discussing the uh, vesicular secretome, you you will learn that vesicles are not one thing; they are a cloud of messaging that the cell is sending out to its environment and influencing other cells. And different vesicles have different morphology, different structure, different messages, and different function in the recipient cell. So uh, I hope you enjoy this massive open online course, and I welcome you to be enthused and, and enjoy the field of extracellular vesicles. Thank you very much for your attention. And also thank you very much to uh, Cecilia Lesser, who's coordinated this course, Jong Song Go at Postec, who uh, uh, was the uh, executive chair of education at ISEV when this course was initiated, and Wei Yan Chao at University of California at Irvine, that has really um, helped us initiate this course. Again, thank you very much for your attention.